G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course the Calculus, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champions in Legends of Runeterra. We are going to be doing the 4 star target campaign against Aurelian Sol today and we are going to be using Echo once again for this run. So this is a run that I am going to be super excited to do, quite simply because we get to play my favourite build which is the Bonk build or essentially, you know, Gatebreaker builds. And ideally I like to play this because quite simply we have a, uh, you know, tiny little, well let's call it channel lore or essentially a running joke or running gaggy on the channel where basically we use champions that have uh, a really good synergy with, you know, using Gatebreakers here. So I believe the club, if you will, Club Bonk we call it, uh, includes members like Darius, Garen, and I think Jax as well. There's quite a few of them there, so obviously, <laughs> really, really fun build. Um, yeah, we're going to try to add another member. We're going to try to induct or initiate another member into the club, which is going to be Echo, of course. And basically, this build was suggested by one of you guys who wanted to see a double Gatebreaker Echo with Gale Force. And basically, the idea with this one is to hopefully get a couple of chrono breaks uh, essentially revive the echo multiple times that way we can potentially strike the nexus multiple times as well so in other words it's like a pseudo leblanc if you will now i need to note one thing which could be a potential problem i have tried this build on you know other lesser adventures um the echo tends to fill up your hand too much, even without the gate breakers, I should say. Um, the Echo tends to fill, fill up your hand too much because he will be generating a lot of predicts. So getting discards could be important here. But at the same time, uh, you know, I guess we need to play really, really smart because we can potentially run into a situation where we fill up our hand too much. Echo essentially, you know, gets destroyed because it cannot recall into our hand. And what's going to happen is that you're going to lose the Echo and you're going to have to wait for another copy of it, which could be a little bit, well, let's call it problematic. But either way, we're going to try this build and see how feasible and workable it is. Interestingly, this was the build that I wanted to run the first time I played the Echo in the ASOL here. But I believe I did not go for it quite simply because I had another Gatebreaker run prior to that, really, really close to that. I think like, you know, two days before or something. I believe it was Nasus uh, into the Aurelian Sol. So ultimately, I decided to go with a different Echo build. But since this, you know, particular build suggestion has resurfaced, if you will, um, I like to take a look at it and see how we do. So thanks for the suggestion. All right, so in terms of the Echo here, we have a level 30 and 2 star Echo, which means in terms of the star powers, we have a Z Drive Resonance, plus one starting mana, your credit cards cost one less. Branching possibly is when you see a unit in the prediction, grant it plus one, plus one. So no changes from last time out. I believe it was the same set of powers that we used into the first time we took on the Aurelian Soul. In terms of the champion level, However, there is a slight difference. We have, you know, raised Echo by five levels. That way, we have access to all three rare relic slots. Uh, we also have the Forest Tank next itself, and of course, the all important level 20 game Star Droid Champion. Now, in terms of the relics itself, we have a Gale Force and double Gatebreakers, like I mentioned. So, the idea with this one essentially is to have Echo strike with the Gatebreakers, get the uh, fleeting time tricks in hand, hopefully, play some of the time tricks without filling up our hand too much, and at the same time, potentially using the Gale Force to bring him on again and generate even more time tricks so like i said we have to balance it out a little bit because we need to be careful about not accidentally uh destroying our echo here that could be bad but we'll have to see let's quickly head back out we're gonna see how this build functions into the rally and sol Alrighty, we're all in. First things first, let's see what the A Sol is running. He has a power overwhelming. Okay, that is really, really good because it's probably the easier set of legendary powers. The Victor here has a unstable inventory. The Gangplank here is power overwhelming as well. And Zoe here has an unstable inventory. Alright, so it doesn't seem too difficult this path. I hope we you know basically we get a good enough power. That way we can potentially get a successful run here. We get a Endless Wealth Legendary, a Spell Burn. When you play a spell, deal one to the enemy nexus and game starts on a sparring student. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to reroll this. I know it seems like crazy. Legendary power and epic power here. This is really, really good because we get to deal one to the enemy nexus with the echo. But um, what I really want to do is I want to see if we could get cost reduction on the spells. That would be far better. If we could get a Wild Inspiration, that way we can get cost reduction on created cards, created spells, and potentially, you know, maybe a Spell Singer. That way we can get guaranteed cost reduction on all spells spells that would be even better so we're gonna reroll here and we get a sorcery that is probably just as good if not better so we're gonna go for this all right so let's head into the zoe here right we get amateur aeronaut fallen feline perfectionist and in order of improvement we're gonna reroll everything except the fallen feline actually we'll keep the aeronaut as well could be really useful to have an elusive unit into the zoe here 
get a drop order, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'd rather see this in the prediction. That way we could potentially get, you know, the stat increase. Uh, yeah, as well as summoning it one shot. So what we're going to go for here, I guess, is the Aeronaut. Alright, we'll play the Time Winder before the Moongo connects, that way we bypass that. Let's get rid of Iterative Improvement. Right, let's copy another Aeronaut here. We'll bring that on. Oh, we can actually bring on all three units here, which is great. That's gonna, you know, increase our damage output, which is awesome. can actually bring on Echo as well. I think we'll do that. Alright, we get to activate a couple of predicts here. And we get a drop order as well. Great. Let's grab an Aeronaut. And get another predict. Um, let's go with a Investigator. Doesn't really matter, we should have to win if I'm gonna be frank with you. Um, yeah, we actually don't need to attack with just Echo only. We might as well just attack with everything. <laughs> get the victory and get out. Alright, we get a Xenotype Researcher, Dawn Speakers, and a Sandstone Chimera. The Xenotype could be good, but I really don't think we need the nap. I think getting the Colossal Hammer could be better, and Dawn Speakers is fairly cheap as well. I think we'll go for this. Right, let's head to the Support Champ. Uh, we get a Rek'Sai, we get a Draven, and it's a Juani. Okay, I'm gonna go with the Draven here. The reason for that is quite simply because I would like an extra, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, we might need to discard some potential time tricks if essentially our hand gets too full. So having a Draven on the board could actually help us with the spinning axes and whatnot. So if, if, if you know, if we're not gonna cast the spinning axe to get a stat buff, at the very least we can use that spinning axe as a potential discard uh, mechanic, if you will. It's not, you know, probably not the best or the most optimum use of the spinning axe, but it is still something, so we're gonna go for this. I do realize Rek'Sai had Scout there, but I think Draven is probably better. Alright, so we have a Jin and a uh, Ezreal here. This is a... what is this? This is a Arena Mech Caster, a Item Chest, and a Healer. We're probably gonna head to the Item Chest, so we're gonna head down to the Ezreal. Alright, get Draven here, which is great. We get a Perfectionist and Whirling Death as well. I think we'll get rid of Perfectionist. We'll keep Whirling Death and the Drop Order. At the very least, we have a cheap unit to bring on, which is gonna help us. And we draw another Draven, so unfortunate. Okay, we get our Echo as well, cool. Let's go to drop water first. Surprise, surprise. Broke my hand, so I got a new one. Um Let's actually go iterative improvement. And because we should be able to predict a lot, and well not predict but create cards a lot, this augment could be great, so we're gonna go for that. And we'll bring this guy on. What do I do? What don't I do? See? This is That's cool. Uh, it's probably gonna die next turn, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll see. Let's just attack like so and see what happens. Yeah, because there's gonna be another stack shot for sure. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking that far ahead there, but... Eh, well, at the very least. Let's go another uh, Draven here. It is alright. I tell you, I have an idea. Let's pass the turn. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Um, we'll discard this regular time trick. We don't need this regular time trick because the Echo should be generating a lot of it for us. So we're going to get rid of that. We'll buff the Draven here. And then we'll go Whirling Death. Have the Draven strike the sky. That way it survives. Take 
take some damage from the extra there, but that's fine. Uh, let's pass the turn, we'll bring on Echo next turn. Uh, let's attack first with a scout. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go Whirling Death. We are gonna have this guy strike the Ezreal. Oh, that's so cool. Come out and play. No way. Unfortunately, we cannot play any time tricks here, but it's cool. We'll let it discard. We will attack. We've already attacked with Scout, haven't we? Uh, yes, we have. So we're gonna attack with this, and I'd say. Yeah, that's about it. Um, actually, let's give Traven a... No, hold on. Let's commit this first. Well, I didn't do anything. It's alright. Um, spinning Axe will time trick and we'll buff the Draven. Time for the money makers. Generating a lot of time tricks here, but unfortunately we cannot play them. It's cool though. Might be able to play a few here. Um, probably gonna take some damage as well. I think it should be fine. We'll just bring on the echo. Actually, I wasn't thinking straight. I think that Esther will probably use Mystic Shot on her echo there. That is a little bit unfortunate. Well, it's cool. We'll probably just spend the time tricks here since we can. And we get time wind. Okay. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna end this battle right now. Because I don't want to take too much damage here, so I think that's going to be important. Get rid of time trick, we'll deal 3 and deal 1 to the Nexus. Get the win and get out. That's cool. Alright, so we get a Roar the Slayer with the discard. Time has come in the Arena Kingpin here. I think we're gonna go with the discard, that could be useful. One cost kill the weakest enemy as well, that is gonna be great. Uh, we have a item chest and a Arena Mecha chest, so we're gonna head to the item chest. Spell Shield and Drop Border is perfect because that will actually increase the amount of drop borders we have in the deck and hopefully we see it more in the prediction. That way we can potentially bring it on for free. Alright, let's head to the Caitlyn here. Alright, so drop border, drop border, dodge speakers. We'll get rid of the two drop borders here. We'll get rid of the dodge speakers as well. We'll keep the time winder. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get a good two cost unit. We get the very investigator, which isn't too bad, but I don't like this because it draws a card for the enemy as well. We'll still bring on though, because it's the only unit we can play. I think we'll go for an early time winder here. Let's discard time trick. Deal one, deal three. No stone unturned. After them? After them. Alright, let's go with a Let's go to Draven first. It's Draven time. I think I have an idea what I want to do. Drop a Dawn Speaker. By the strength of our convictions. And it chooses not to attack. I was hoping this would attack. We block with a 5-4. Draven gets a buff. That would be great. Alright, so let's go with the Echo first. Have we, we can go whirling death, I have an idea. Turning yourself in. Come out and play. Uh. 
We actually could have, you know, had Draven attack there instead of Yeko, but it's cool. Um, well, at the very least, we can still attack again and get the win. <laughs> We're not exactly triggering Echo's, you know, ability. I'd love to, and I think we'll try to do that. You know, I think that's the core of the challenge here. We're probably just abusing Draven's kit right now. But yeah, basically, that was the whole reason I picked up the Draven. We can potentially get too many time tricks. And essentially, if this was on a turn where we had, like, uh, six cards instead of the current tree that we have here... Um, what's gonna happen is that, let me just quickly t take some time to explain my thought process, is that the Echo here will get destroyed because it cannot recall into the hand. The hand is full, obviously. So as a result, we're gonna lose the Echo for the upcoming turns. So that was the whole reason or the, you know, rationale behind picking up the Draven here. Getting this Spinning Axe to discard some of these time tricks, free up the hand a little bit, that way we can have the Echo come back safely. Uh, but we, unfortunately it's, you know, going too well. <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna drag Patrol Wardens here and get the victory. Alright, so we get a Gotcha, Legion Grenadier, and Time Winder. We're gonna go with Time Winder. Predict as well as potentially a, you know, another discard, you know, more discard cards. I think that's gonna be great. Alright, let's set to the Stilted Rope Maker. Uh, draw two to an enemy. I really don't think we need any of these. We definitely don't need any more cards, so we're just gonna leave. Let's set into the Shop Note here and see if we could get a decent enough power. Oh lord, Duplicate, we're picking this up. <laughs> what are the odds we get Duplicate on a damn common power node? Crazy. Um, crazy slim. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and rock with what we've got. I really don't think we need anything here necessarily. So let's head into the gangplank. Alright, so Dawn Speaker, Saboteur, Timewinder. I think we're gonna keep this. We basically won. When, you know, when you draw a duplicate, you basically won the game, if I'm gonna be frank with you. Man, I, I think you know what's gonna happen right now, right? I think the Echo is gonna generate too many time tricks and we're gonna have too many cards in our hand. We need to be really careful of that situation. I think, you know, thinking back, right, the duplicate might be a bad pick. We'll have to see. Which is really weird because usually duplicate is a really good pick. Um, let's go Legion Saboteur here first. End the round. We're not gonna play anything yet. Drop a Draven. Alright, it's cool. Yeah, I think we can also safely discard more cards now because that way we are able to free up our um, space for a Draven. That is going to be great. Uh, sorry, not Draven, but the Echo. So let's go the Aeronaut here. And I think I have an idea what I want to do. Right, let's let's go spinning axe. We'll discard the dawn speaker, buff this guy. Now we're cooking. And we'll actually discard one echo. I don't think we need that many. No, we only have two echoes at the moment because unfortunately we don't have a champion item on the echo yet. So we might need the spare one just in case. Let's actually discard the time winder here and buff the two tree. Get a little bit more damage that way. And basically we free up our hand for as many echoes as possible. Alright, let's see how duplicate functions here. It's probably gonna be insane. Well, unless that happens and we end the battle before we could actually see how many uh, time tricks we get, that is, you know, just as insane. <laughs> um, I guess what we're gonna go for here is probably a reroll. I think I'd like cost reduction and echo. That could be great. 
Uh, oh god, Shadow Totem, you've got to be joking with me. <laughs> um, okay, you know what, let's, let's go for it. It might seem crazy, because we are going to get six time tricks. That is actually insane. Um, yeah, we'll go for it, we'll go for it, why not? It seems fun, it's probably a little bit overkill, I'd say. Actually, we're gonna get more than six time tricks, because the duplicate is gonna summon an ephemeral as well. So we're gonna get four echoes on the board, and that's basically gonna mean we're gonna get eight time tricks. My god, that is crazy. Um, yeah, we'll go for it, we'll go for it. Just for the fun, just for, you know, just for lols, this isn't really a, well, let's just say, this is more of a fun run, obviously, because we're going with gatebreakers here. Uh, really cheesy run, so we're just gonna go with Shadow Totem and see how this does. Man, it echoes. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's set the power here. Let's grab a plus one, plus zero. We get a Sejuani and a Fiora. Um, this is a healer node. This is a gold chest and a spell chest. I tell you what, we're going to head to the healer node. And the reason for that is quite simply because we might want to cut some cards, I feel. Because we are approaching the point where we can potentially get rid of some cards that we don't necessarily need. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to head to the Fiora. Alright, so I think we're gonna keep this. Seems fine. I I'm really keen to see how this echo functions. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> um, let's play a... Let's play... No, let's not play that first. A and actually, we will play it because we might need to capture it. I have my we capture only one, unfortunately, but, you know, it's still okay. We're gonna end the round. Draven on. I have the best job. Yeah, we definitely need to get rid of some stuff, so having the discard will be really helpful. Um Let's drop perfectionist here. Oh, this is a draw. I wasn't paying attention to that. Uh, it's cool, it's cool. We'll, we'll still grab it. We'll probably bring on Time Winder. Probably should have, you know, brought on Investigator because it doesn't have a... Well, Investigator also has a draw, I forgot. Um, tell her, this is what we'll do. Let's play Time Winder. We'll discard this guy, deal tree and deal tree. I want to free up the hand a little bit. I suspect, you know, it could be bad if we... Um, we have too many cards, and we are getting too many cards, unfortunately. I <laughs> wasn't even, you know, thinking ahead. I just saw all these OP items, and I decided to go for it. Um, I guess we're going to attack. Can we actually get a win here, right? Man, that is insane. Uh, yeah, let's discard Timewinder. We'll probably just buff this Draven. Spinning Axe, we'll discard the... Um, what is this? The uh, the, uh, the 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 crit? The, oh, I can't remember the spell name. The Ear of Improvement. <laughs> we'll discard that and we'll just buff the other Draven as well. We actually get the win here. That is insane. Turn three victory. Oh man, we are so gonna smoke the ASOL. In fact, I tell you what, this is what we're gonna do. I've been, you know, using Draven quite aggressively since the early half of the battle, right? I've had my fun. Let's actually try to use only the Echo. That way, we're, you know, trying to at least test out the feasibility of this build, and, you know, it's probably gonna be really OP. But anyway, at the very least, we're still gonna use the Echo only. That way, we're still adhering somewhat to, you know, the suggestion here. I think that's gonna be fair. So essentially, we're gonna try to stick to only using the Echo. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pick up the Blade's Edge here. I think the Charging Sigil could be used. All right, let's see what our options. We have a Karma and a Tom Kench. I think we're going to head to the Karma, so we're going to head into the healer here. Uh, we're going to cut a card for sure, and I think we can get rid of some units. I think I'm happy to get rid of the Dawn Speaker. I don't really think we are using this too much, if I'm going to be honest with you. And let's head into the Karma here. Alright, draw Draven here, but again, like I said, we're not going to use him. We'll keep following Feline, Earth Improvement, and Timewinder. Actually, I think we'll get rid of these two. We'll keep the Timewinder and the Draven. That way, we increase the odds of drawing the Echo. And we get double Echoes, great. <laughs> this is going to be OP. Triple Echoes.
You know, I think we might have made this a little bit too overpowered. <laughs> the Echo is now an unstoppable monster. That is a turn one victory. That is insane. Um, <laughs> I have no words to describe that, if I'm going to be honest with you. Well, I'm, I'm really happy because it's going to make things a lot easier here. Okay, we're just going to go a drop border. Again, like I said, this is not exactly a, uh, you know, a, a run, you know, that is centered around... Um, skills and whatnot. We're just having fun with the echo here. If you want to check out an actual legitimate echo run, I'm gonna link it up in the com in the channel card, the, the video card, I should say, on your top left or top right. That way you can potentially check that out. That's probably gonna be a little bit more of a reasonable and a more, uh, you know, well, let's say a more rational focus echo run. This is more of a fun echo run, if you will. <laughs> All right, so let's head into the shop here. Grab a power, we have memory game, and we're not gonna pick that up. I don't think that's too useful. Let's ignore everything else here as well. We don't really need it, if I'm gonna be frank. We're gonna head straight into, I guess, the fist here with the item chest. We should be able to get a... Okay, duplicate fist is gonna be interesting. Let's see who gets the turn one victory. Right, uh, actually we can't get a turn one victory because we don't have cost reduction on the Echo. Ah, we need to focus on that. Maybe potentially look into getting, you know, cost reduction later on. Uh, we're gonna get rid of Perfectionist and the Drop Water here. Actually, we'll keep the Drop Water. That's a Mana Gem now, which is really good. We might keep that. We should be getting four Echoes, if I'm not mistaken. So, we have space for two units. Again, we're not gonna bring on Draven. Or at the very least, we'll try not to bring on Draven. Timewinder will discard the Investigator and kill the two fists. Grab a Blade's Edge. You. Yeah, you bastard. Yeah, fucking bastard. Oh, well, we're past the turn. We probably should have picked up a um, Timewinder. That way we could have taken out the fist this turn. But I'm an idiot. Or we can use Legion Saboteur. And I think we'll do that. At the very least... Oh, crap. It attacks first. Ah, if it attacks first, it's a different story. So I guess we're just gonna have to pass the turn. We take 8 damage here. I was hoping it wasn't gonna attack first. We bring on Saboteur. We capture the two Fizz. Holy shit. We take some heavy damage here. 15 to be precise, my god. It's cool, drop the R Echo. Uh, we're, sm we're so smoking the asshole. <laughs> uh, let's go to Timewinder here. <laughs> Even more busted stuff. Man, I wasn't expecting the Echo to be this OP. Well, probably I should have known. Shadow Totem and Duplicate is insane. It is absolutely insane. All right, we're gonna head to the item chest here, and we are just gonna go with a Whirling Death, I feel. Or do we wanna go with a Legion Saboteur? Uh, well, the Rally could be great. I think we're gonna go with a Legion Saboteur. Holy shit. Let's head to the healer. We are gonna grab healing here. And we're gonna head into the victor. We should have no problem moving forward. Alright, Draven, Roar the Slayer, Timewinder. We'll hang on to the Draven, increase the odds of drawing the Echo, get rid of Roar the Slayer. This is probably something we're gonna cut. Actually, we probably should cut it at the healer note there. Well, it's cool. We have it in our deck now. It, you know, can't really do anything. It's fine. Uh, we'll keep the Timewinder and the Drop Water here. Echo. Timewinder. Can you join Echo? We definitely can. <laughs> Drop border. And we can use time when they discard this Draven. Another one. We'll discard this drop water. And we should kill it. Um, we'll go with another time winder. And another time winder. I think we get the second one, not the first one. I'm not really sure. I wasn't really paying attention there. Four mana echo on, we win. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, um, yeah, we should win because uh, we have like what five damage on the echo here. So one echo deals f one echo deals ten damage because we have two gate breakers and we have four echoes. So that means that's gonna be forty damage. All right, we get a Savage Shield. Wow, we're picking this up. This is a stat buff on the Echo that's gonna make it even more insane. So we should have a six attack stat Echo because we have the um, Reunited here, right? Yeah, we have to Reunited. So six attack stat Echo. So I guess that's gonna be six times two. That's gonna be 12 damage per Echo. We have four Echoes. That's gonna be 48. That's still not enough to take down the Asol. I tell you, let's try to spend a reroll. If we could get a Fade here, that would be kind of crazy. We could get a turn one victory if we're lucky. Uh, Raiden plate armor, we don't need it. Let's reroll again. And we get a Savage Shield again. So unfortunate. Uh, we'll, we'll still go for it though. Even though the focusing crystal could be great, that's gonna trigger after um, essentially, you know, the echo comes on. So it's not that useful. I'd like the damage on demand, so we're gonna go with a Savage Shield. Now we can get a Reunited here again. A second Reunited. That would be insane. And we get a Welcome Gift, slow but steady. Okay, not exactly the best, but I think what we're gonna go for here is a Welcome Gifts. If we could get an Evolution from this Epic Power Node up ahead, the Epic Power Shop, we should be able to get a lot of damage with the Echo. I'm gonna try for that. <laughs> Alright, so let's head to the Jinx. Alright, so we're gonna get rid of Improvement and the Legion Saboteur. We'll keep the Echo in the drop border. I think you guys know the drill at this point. Drop water on. Surprise, surprise. Discard or discard Aeronaut. We don't really need to bother about what we're doing at this point. We should have to win. We can even discard all our cards. Oh my god. This is the POC, guys. This is the POC. Absolute madness if everything goes well. Uh, let's go at Blade's Edge. Yeah, we've won. <laughs> we have won without a doubt. Oh lord, turn to victory. The sun rock got me good. Goodbye. If it ain't my favorite time traveling to this point, buddy. I'd be weirded out if I wasn't. Oh man, uh, we get an Aeronaut here, we're just gonna go for it. It doesn't really matter what we pick up at this point, we should be smoking the ASOL. Uh, let's head to the shop note and see if we can get Evolution here. We get a Share the Bounty, well we'll still pick it up, it's probably not the best but it's fine. I really don't think we need any cards necessarily, so we're just gonna leave and head into the Irelia here. Uh, it's so sad we couldn't get Cost Reduction though, Cost Reduction would have completed this. But yeah, let's try to aim for the same game plan again. Drop portal on, get the mana gems, and then bring on the Echo. Oh, we get Draven here, okay. Okay, now it's a little bit interesting. Alright, um, we're still gonna go Timewinder. We're gonna discard a... Hmm, I think we'll discard the Aeronaut. We'll, no, we'll discard Whirling Death, and then we'll deal 3 to these guys. And we get double Timewinders. We'll go, we'll grab the Saboteur. Saboteur. Right, let's go with a drop order. Man, I love this board. Saboteur. I have my we missed the capture there, but it's cool. Uh, at the very least, we're dealing damage. I'd like to smoke the Aurelia before it can summon a champion with level up. That would be my ideal game plan here. Man, I'm good. Or can we... No, I, I believe that Aurelia is coming on. I have an idea. Show them no weakness. Alright, here's my plan. Draven first. Unfortunately, we don't get Echo, so we're probably gonna rely on Draven this game. 
Here's my brilliant plan. Trust me. Explosives prime. <laughs> Free damage here. Beautiful. This is my time. Uh, and we have enough just to essentially... Oh, we don't have enough because... No, actually we do because these two Dravens have fated. What a pure coincidence. Alright, so we're just gonna buff the Draven here. Now we're cooking. 31 damage. Alright, so more buffs to Blades Edge, Gotcha, and Brutal Hunter here. Yeah, we're just gonna go with the Blades Edge buff. I really don't care at this point. We have a win with the Aesol. We've already, you know, beaten the Aesol in my opinion. <laughs> Let's head to the Draven here. Alright, let's get rid of these three units. We'll keep the drop border. That's what we join Echo this time. Timewinder. Oh, Draven again. Okay, so looks like our luck is, um... Not really on our side. <laughs> uh, well, I, I say not on our side, but it's really, you know, still fairly lucky. Let's drop the drop border first. Alright, so good thing we waited, because essentially now we can't play Timewinder for maximum effect. We're gonna get rid of Fallen Feline. Do you treat these two? Uh, let's grab a... Let's simply grab a Time Trick. It should grab the second prediction, because that's probably... Um, Oh shit, that, that one did not get the duplicate buff. <laughs> That's on me. Well, it's cool. At the very least, we should still have the Draven next turn. So it's it, it's still alright. I was hoping to draw the Echo, but sometimes you don't get what you want. I shouldn't be complaining because this is a really lucky run. <laughs> uh, let's go with the Draven. It's Draven time. Well, hey there, Let's attack. Hey, Alright, so we're gonna go Time Winder. We're gonna get rid of Time Trick. Actually, we'll not get rid of Time Trick. We'll get rid of one Spinning Axe. Actually, it doesn't really matter what we do here. Why am I planning this one out so thoughtfully? <laughs> I tell you, let's go with Time Trick, actually. Let's get rid of... Sorry, not Time Trick. Let's go with Spinning Axe. We'll discard this Spinning Axe. Time for the money maker. Whirling Death. That way we kill both of these. Oh man, we have to win here, I think. Um, we'll, we'll probably go with a time trick, just to see what we can draw. Let's hope we draw a Echo, unfortunately not. We'll go with a Fallen Feline then. Can't use that as a discard next turn. So unfortunately we can't get Echo here. Really, really unfortunate. Yeah, we finally get him. But probably a little too late. Let's discard one spinning axe for Dutri to Draven and the Sky. Um, let's act let's actually skip. Let's not get gra uh, grab anything here. I want to see if we could just beat you know the Draven with what we've got, <laughs> and I think we should be able to. We don't even need the Echo this game. Yeah, we've won. <laughs> okay, let's pass the turn. We attack with everything. Next turn, and we get the victory. Cool. Maybe those 
other guys. All right, we get a oh my lord another crystal carrier. Are you freaking kidding me? What is the luck in this run? This is probably the luckiest run on the channel so far. Um, we'll have to see. Let's head into the Aurelian Soul here and take him on. We should have the victory. Ah oh, man, this is insane. Um, let's get rid of one drop water. We don't need that many. I really want an echo here. That would be crazy. Absolutely freaking crazy. Oh come on, Draven again. Oh, no. No, where's my turn one victory? Where's the damn Echo Man? <laughs> uh, let's go to drop water first. Man, I, I actually feel like I want to surrender this just to see if we can get the OTK. I really feel like I genuinely want to do that. Um, well, we'll see. I think we'll just uh, we'll play normally first and we'll see what happens. Let's copy this guy. Man, we're getting a lot of you know drop orders. <laughs> uh, let's attack, obviously. We have mana for days now. Mana for days. Let's see how much mana we get. <laughs> Ten mana, all in one go. Oh my god, this is insane. This is probably one of the craziest runs we're gonna have in a really very long time. Um, let's actually block with the regen one because it's probably not that useful in the Aurelian Soul. I'm gonna predict here. I really want that echo, man. You better give me an echo. And we do get the echo, cool. We're gonna skip that one. There we go. All right, I'll bring him on, and I think we should have to win. Never had luck, never needed. The skies don't Wait, whoa, care. what the... Oh, shit, we've already spent the duplicate. That's why we didn't get the... Ah, okay, okay, it's my bad, it's my bad. Well, at the very least, we should have enough to recall here safely, so we're not going to play anything, actually. Um, you, you know, I think we'll play legions. No, we're not playing anything. We'll, we should be able to recall safely here. Yep. And we're gonna bring it on again and just get the win. We dodged the bullet there as well because there's a Viego here. <laughs> well, probably too late. We've basically won this game. Well, guys, that is probably the craziest run that we have gotten in a really, really long time. I think I'd say, you know, the craziest run with the Gale Force and the Gatebreaker that, well, not really Gale Force, with the Gatebreakers, essentially, that we've gotten. Uh, could be the LeBlanc, as you can see here, the fastest time I have on the Aurelian Salt. 16 minutes with the LeBlanc, absolutely insane. But I think the, you know, craziest run, if my memory serves me correctly, um, probably goes to the Darius, which we essentially use with, you know, triple gate breakers on the Darius. That was absolutely insane. We had a duplicate Darius with triple gate breakers, and really, we just smoked the Aurelian Sol. In fact, the Darius held the fastest time at 19 minutes before the LeBlanc essentially took over. So, yeah, it's probably up there, I would say. But this Echo Run was probably one of the most insane that we've had in a really, really long time. Not gonna lie to you, I absolutely miss playing gate breakers. Um, I know it could be a little bit boring because, you know, it's really a low effort build all you just do is you know bring on the champion and it does all the job but it's a really fun build because sometimes it can get a really high attack stat and the entire deck or essentially the cards just autopilots and takes over for you it could be a really good um you know change in the 
pace, if you will, because if you are playing really frequently, you know, like uh, trying to fashion out better chances, trying to play well, uh, you know, it could be good to essentially just, you know, take some time, just take your foot off the gas a little bit, just relax, let the cart do its job, let the relics do its job, and essentially just, you know, low effort drag units and get the win. So obviously, uh, really, really fun run. Probably one of the funnest that I've had in a really, really long time. Uh, obviously, Echo here got a lot of help. That duplicate pickup on that uh, common uh, shop note was really, really insane. I wasn't even anticipating that. And to think about, you know, getting the, uh, what is it, the Savage Shield and then the Shadow Totem as well. Oh my god, this is probably one of the best runs that I've done on the channel. I can guarantee you that. But anyway, like I said, really, really fun run. Uh, definitely miss playing the Gatebreaker build. In fact, I have another Gatebreaker build coming up, you know, in the coming days. I'm trying to get that specific champion leveled up first before we attempt it. I'm not really sure if it's going to be as OP as this one, but I can promise you it's probably going to be just as fun because, you know, who doesn't like Gatebreakers? <laughs> anyway, I guess that wraps it up. So I guess Echo is a now honorary member or potentially just a new member into our infamous club bonk here on the channel so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did consider leaving a like as well as subscribing i really appreciate that support but most importantly it's so you don't miss future episodes or uploads of legends of runeterra or path for champions content just like this one now i've also launched channel memberships here on the channel so feel free to join if you like or potentially like to find out more you can head on over to the memberships tab on my channel page to read about it but either way thank you guys so much for all the support thank you guys for joining me as well as watching hopefully i catch you guys in the next one goodbye